I believe this is the smartest, freest, bravest country the world has ever known. And I'm not going to treat you in a way that under-evaluates you. I'm going to treat you like adults, because that's what you've earned. And I hope that I earn your vote on January 23rd. And if I do, I promise you this, I'll beat Joe Biden, and I'll make you guys proud that you elected me President of the United States. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Beth Ginsburg. I'm an associate professor in residence of political science here at the Stanford campus of the University of Connecticut. I started the fall of 2010, but I've been teaching since 1998. How did this trip to New Hampshire come about? The idea of putting the book learning and combining that with the practical experience sounded very exciting to me. This trip represents my ability as a young person in politics to meet with people who have spent decades in the field and to understand their way of life. So chronologically, New Hampshire does their primaries before any other state, and they have for the last hundred years. So it's useful for a quantitative analysis of future election results. When it comes to issues, one really big one for me is immigration. I come from an immigrant background, and so for me, like knowing about um, what social services and related are kind of like important to me. How has your ethnic background affected your political views or decisions in terms of voting? Um, with me, I'm Latino, so um, it really varies. I mean, my uncle got deported a very long time ago, and um, when Trump was in office, I know he was very big on immigration and sending people back to their countries and deportation and having um, people in, like on the borders incarcerated in cages and stuff like that. So I'm very big on immigration reform and finding ways to kind of help minorities. We all gathered here at the Stanford campus on Tuesday, January 2nd. Uh, and we left the campus around 10 o'clock and loaded the buses, left the campus, and drove up to um, our hotel in New Hampshire. Our uh, base of operations was in Manchester, but we had um, arranged to have our bus the whole time we were there, so we were able to travel to various events in different locations throughout the state. On the first day, we went to the University of New Hampshire, where we met with Professor Andrew Smith. Um, who is the author of a book about the New Hampshire primaries and also director of their survey research center and he talked with us about the history of New Hampshire being the first presidential primary state. New Hampshire's uh, primary came about with first off legislation in 1913, the Bullock Act, and it says an act to provide for the election of delegates to the national conventions by direct vote of the people. There are no, there are no independents, there's nobody here in the middle anymore. The way we win elections is to get our base to show up. How do you get your base to show up? Demonize your opponent yeah. and you make your base angry. What would you say uh, what it was like for the students to attend a rally like that for some the first time? I think it was very interesting. It's always um, different how we see candidates on camera um, versus how we see them in person. Um, and there was no filter, so there was no editing. So it was more of the raw speech that she was going to give and, you know, the answers without, you know, uh, preparation. So I thought it was very interesting for the students to see that. So where have y'all been? 
Well, we're glad you're here. So we will start, I will tell you a little bit about myself then, and we will talk about where we are in the country, and then we'll talk about how to save her. You don't fix Democrat chaos with Republican chaos. We all know people that are above 75 that can run circles around us. And then we know Joe Biden. <laughs> We will defund sanctuary cities once and for all. No more safe havens for illegal immigrants. Instead of catch and release, we'll go to catch and deport. That's what's going to stop everything that's happening in the world. So don't let Biden and Yellen tell you that China's a competitor. I dealt with China every single day at the United Nations. They never saw us as a competitor. They always saw us as an enemy. We've got to look at them the way they look at us. No one will outwork me in this race. No one will outsmart me in this race. So if you like what I had to say today, go tell 10 people. Go tell them to go to NikkiHaley.com to check in and everything we have, all of our issues are on there. Take a yard sign, tell your friends and family, get involved in being part of the solution. If you don't like what I had to say today, shh. <laughs> Just don't say anything and don't tell anyone you were here. God bless you. Thank you so much. With Nikki Haley, I think her approach was trying to be very, um, I think she limited what she was talking about based off of the group setting because we are in New Hampshire, so she wasn't going to directly talk about issues that New Hampshire voters typically would go against. We went to um, Concord, which is the state capital, and we met with the Secretary of State of New Hampshire. He was um, incredibly generous with his time and talked to us about how elections are conducted in New Hampshire. And then after that, we met with the Democratic Party chair of the state of New Hampshire, who talked about the Democratic Party, Democratic Party politics. So we were able to get a inside view of how the parties function in the first primary state. In the evening, we attended a rally for Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey. Well, good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Good to be back here in New Hampshire. I got into this race back in June because I was really afraid that as the rest of the field was coming together and listening to them as they were entering the race, that no one was going to tell the truth. Donald Trump is unfit to be president of the United States. Absolutely unfit. I heard Nikki the other day say, we should have psychiatric testing to determine whether someone's competent. I don't need a doctor coming into, I look at Biden, I know. <laughs> I believe this is the smartest, freest, bravest country the world has ever known. And I'm not going to treat you in a way that under-evaluates you. I'm going to treat you like adults, because that's what you've earned. And I hope that I earn your vote on January 23rd. And if I do, I promise you this, I'll beat Joe Biden and I'll make you guys proud that you elected me president of the United States. Thank you very much. What we, and what we should expect to return our results, right? Yes. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with having competition, making sure that people are... He seemed to, to take more questions from the audience than Nikki Haley did. Uh, and I think New Hampshire politics is very retail politics, so, you know, being more engaged with the audience is, uh, I think, what the New Hampshire residents are looking for. The New Hampshire Institute of Politics is where all the candidates go for um, political discourse, um, for reaching out from the candidates and the campaigns to the voters. Um, so it was really interesting to see what they've done. They've met with 
pretty much anybody who's run for president in the last 50 years has been through the Institute of Politics. That was really interesting and seeing the history of presidential campaigns was fantastic. And hearing from people who are teaching political science in these locations and, you know, the opportunity that their students get, I can only wish for for my students. And then in the evening, um, we went to another Chris Christie rally. Um, and I know it might sound silly, why would you go to two rallies for the same candidate? You learn different things at different rallies and questions from the audience aren't always the same and how things are phrased aren't always the same. Yeah, especially if Trump's the nominee. But if you were the single deciding vote in that election, <laughs> how would you? Yeah, that's a hard hit. I'd vote for me. You also said you wouldn't do that last night. Um, Wait, if I, but you, last night they didn't say I'd be the single deciding vote. They just said I would write myself fair, fair. in. Okay. In a, in a, in a, if you, you know, had like a fit of ego. If you had that kind of choice, how can you say that you stand for the best interests of the American people and still abstain? I, I pretty much just asked, you know, he had said the previous night that he would not vote on a Biden-Trump ticket or he would vote for a third party candidate, you know, um, which I guess is better than not voting at all. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to know how he could claim to support the best interests of the American people while still saying, Trump is trying to destroy democracy, but you know, I won't vote for a Democrat. I think there's little difference between someone who is temperamentally unfit for the presidency, which I believe Trump is, and someone who I think is now physically and mentally unfit for the presidency, which I think Biden is. And so I can't answer a hypothetical like if I had the deciding vote. I mean, you know, that was just a ridiculous question with all due respect, because I'll never have the deciding vote. I mean, if I had the deciding vote, if I did, I'd have to make a choice. But I don't have the deciding vote, and I don't have to settle for one of those two. With Chris Christie, I think he tried to come off as one of us, someone very casual, trying to make light humor about the country, but insinuating that he understands because he's also affected by it, which realistically, that to me was uncomfortable. And he is a member of authority. He does have a higher up position than just regular American voters do. Right. So you guys are not gonna see you, so if you're doing anything- I think stupid, the trip home to took about four and a half to five hours, a little longer because some of the roads were a bit effect, uh, affected by the bad weather, but we had a phenomenal bus driver who was a truly excellent person, uh, and he negotiated it well. I was excited. I got to learn a lot. Um, I feel like I can definitely use this in the future, where I do plan to, you know, run for office one day. <laughs> it brought in my political landscape by, like, um, just seeing how similar the Republican parties all are. Literally, they all have the same policies, but just have different little tweaks to each one. Um, I just think that some are just more outgoing and some are just more in a safe zone, but I think it just really helped me broaden my, the, like, the landscape by just showing me um, how they differentiate and like how similar they are as well. Well, I enjoyed the trip. I think I learned a lot from mostly from the political candidates themselves. I feel like they, um, like when they're portrayed through the media, whether it's like newspaper or on TV, they look like, or they feel like completely different people. Once like you actually are in person and you get to hear um, kind of like their stance on things, I feel like that made me feel different about a lot of their political perspectives. I have already made notes for the next time I want to do this trip in four years. 
So I'm excited about that. I think it was a great learning experience for the students. This is not something, unfortunately, we don't have these opportunities here in Connecticut. I have always, when I was a kid growing up, worked on political campaigns. And I think there's something almost magical to uh, the idea that in this country, we the people have the power to elect our elected officials and to meet our elected officials and work for who we want to be in office. And I think this trip was just an example of that, of learning about how presidential primaries function in the first state that has them and how candidates campaign in New Hampshire and observing the civic nature of the people in the state of New Hampshire. So I think that was tremendous. It's given me ideas of how to do things better. Do you believe that this current generation of college students can make a real difference in shaking up the political landscape? Absolutely. I have no doubt that any generation can have a lasting impact on democracy and politics in this country. I think, though, on the flip side, we learn. This is, this is grassroots politics. This is retail politics. This is, you know, when we say the practice of politics, this is the practice of politics. This is learning. This is what we're, why we came to New Hampshire. This is happening all over the state with the different candidates. So I think this was a good learning experience, whether we agree or disagree. Do black lives really matter? We're never only guns again. You know what I mean? We gotta kind of be on equal par here. We gotta kind of figure out what's important. That was so confusing. It was very different. Me, as you know, it was very the comment, she goes, Do you feel safe? She's like, I wouldn't think I'm like about asking what I'm like, Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure you're okay. I was like, Yeah, I feel fine. I'm the only one vouching for this guy. The best decision that you can make uh, with your vote, because it's one of the most precious gifts we get as Americans. Someone's got to be the first, it's the way it goes. That's okay. Yeah.